The title of this poem is A Woman Speaks. Moon marked and touched by sun, my magic is unwritten, but when the sea turns back, it will leave my shape behind. I seek no favor untouched by blood, unrelenting as the curse of love permanent as my errors or my pride. I do not mix love with pity, nor hate with scorn, and if you would know me, look into the entrails of Uranus where the restless oceans pound. I do not dwell within my birth, nor my divinities, who am ageless and half-grown, and still seeking my sisters in Dahomey, witches wear me inside their coiled clothes, as our mothers did, mourning. I have been woman for a long time. Beware my smile. I am treacherous with old magic and the noon's new fury. With all your wide futures promised, I am woman and not white. That was A Woman Speaks, written and read by Audre Lorde. A self-proclaimed black lesbian mother warrior poet. She dedicated her life and art to confront injustices in the world. In her poems, she addresses issues of racism, sexism, classism, heterosexism, and homophobia. She is best known for her technical mastery and emotional expression, as her poems express the anger and pain she felt and observed in her own life. No injustice was too large or too small for her to address. And today, she is recognized as a fighter for all those who were considered deviant, different, or just plain wrong by mainstream society. As she herself was considered all those things. I'm Melissa Sarrington, and welcome to Everyone's Gay, A Look at a Queer History. Caribbean immigrants, she grew up hearing stories about the West Indies. She struggled with communication and appreciated the power that poetry allowed as a form of expression. And she later described herself thinking in poetry from a young age. She attended Hunter College High School, a school designed for intellectually gifted students, and graduated in 1951. During high school, she published her first poem in Seventeen magazine. Here's Lord reflecting on that story. And I wrote a poem about love. And the student advisor, the faculty advisor, said it was a bad sonnet. And I really knew that it was a good one, do you see? But I knew that she didn't like it because of the things that I said in it. So I sent it off to Seventeen Magazine and they bought it. And I made more money from that one poem than I made for the next 10 years. In addition, she was also a member of the Harlem Writers Guild, but felt like an outcast in the guild and she was not accepted because she was considered both crazy and queer by her peers. In 1954, she attended the National University of Mexico for a year, where she confirmed her identity on a both personal level, as a lesbian, and an artistic level, as a poet. She then returned to New York and attended Hunter College, where she became an active participant in the gay culture of Greenwich Village. In 1962, Lord married attorney Edwin Rollins, who was a white gay man, she and Rollins divorced in 1970 after having two children, Elizabeth and Jonathan. After continuing her education, she worked as a writer in residence at Tougaloo College in Mississippi in 1968. There, she led workshops with young black undergraduate students. And it was through these interactions that she reaffirmed her desire not only to live out her life as the crazy queer her Harlem Guild peers had thought she was, but also to devote her attention to her poetry to see if she could combine the two.
After returning once again to New York, Lord became involved in a number of organizations and activist work to grow into her crazy queer identity. In 1977, she became an associate of the Women's Institute for Freedom of the Press, a nonprofit publishing organization that worked to increase communication between women and also connect the public with women-based media platforms. In 1981, Lord was among the founders of the Women's Coalition of St. Croix, an organization to help survivors of sexual abuse and intimate partner violence. During this time, she was also teaching as a professor of English at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, where she fought for the creation of a Black Studies department. In 1984, Lord became a visiting professor at the Free University of Berlin, where she became an influential part of the Afro-German, a term she coined, movement of the time. She worked with the Black women activists in Berlin in order to raise awareness of the intersectionality across racial and ethnic lines. She also taught that instead of fighting systematic issues through violence, language could, should be used as a powerful form of resistance. She urged the local activists to speak up and tell their stories instead of using physical violence. So while she's fighting for change in the United States and abroad, she was also continuing her writing and publishing poetry. Published regularly through the 1960s, Laura's poetry became very politically active in relation to the civil rights, anti-war, and feminist movements. In 1968, she published The First Cities, her first volume of poems that was described by critics as a quiet, introspective book, in which Laura does not wave a black flag, but her blackness is there, implicit in the bone. In 1970, she published her second volume, Cables to Rage, which was mostly written during her residence at Tugelo College and addressed love, betrayal, childbirth, and the complexities of raising children. It is in this book that she openly confirms her homosexuality for the first time. In a poem titled Martha, where she tells of being in love and writes, we shall love each other here if ever at all. She continued her openness in her 1973 book, From the Land Where Other People Live in which she writes of her personal struggles with identity and the anger she felt at the social injustices of the time. It was the release of Cole in 1976 that established Lord as an influential voice in the Black arts movement. As he unites many of the themes Lord is known for, including her rage at racial injustice, her celebration of her Black identity, and her call for intersectionality. Overall, her writings were based on the theory of difference, or the idea that the category of women is not binary opposition to men, but rather full of subdivisions. Today, we know this theory as intersectionality, and she explored this by addressing all different factors in her life that were fundamental to her experience of being a woman. She did not just identify with one category. She was not just a woman. She was not just black. She was not just a lesbian. She was not just a mother. And she was not just a million other things, but rather the combination of all of them together. And she wanted to celebrate all of her parts equally which she did throughout her art and her activism. While acknowledging all parts of herself and the differences between all women and their experiences, most of her work was concerned with race and sexuality. In a documentary interview, she stated, Let me tell you first about what it was like being a black woman poet in the 60s. From Jump. It meant being invisible. It meant being really invisible. It meant being doubly invisible as a black feminist woman and it meant triply invisible as a black lesbian and feminist. While she used her writings to bring these different identities outward through acknowledging the experiences felt by different women, she also brought them inward to discuss her own personal struggle as the outsider, seeing the outsider as both a strength and a weakness. We see this in one of her most famous works, Sister Outsider, published in 1984, in which Lord expressed her commitment to her identity and the multiplicity that came together to create it through a series of essays and speeches. She informs readers that the histories of westernized culture have conditioned people to view differences as opposition to each other. But instead, Laura suggests using differences not to pin one against the other, but to use it as a catalyst for change. One of the goals of Laura's work was to set out to confront the issues of racism and feminist thought. She believed that the amount of scholarship written by, about, and for white feminists served to prove the argument that the oppression of black women was only being continued by feminism. She attacked the racism by describing it as an unrecognized dependence on the patriarchy and only furthering old systems of oppression. To a further extent, she aligned with white feminists who did not recognize race as a feminist issue or the role that racism played in feminist thought with white slave masters, both being agents of oppression, not allowing change. 
Lord had her own opinions on what feminism should look like and came up with six key points which she believed were the fundamental parts of feminism. They were, all forms of oppression were interrelated, change required a public stand, differences should not be used to divide, revolution is a process, feelings are a form of self-knowledge that can inform and enrich activism, acknowledging and experiencing pain helps us transcend it. Furthermore, Lord went on to define racism, sexism, ageism, heterosexualism, elitism, and classism, explaining that ism represented the idea that what is being privileged is superior and therefore should govern everything else. In her piece, Age, Race, Class, and Sex, Women Redefining Difference, she writes, Certainly there are very real differences between us of race, age, and sex, but it is not those differences between us that are separating us. It is rather a refusal to recognize those differences, to examine the distortions which result from our misnaming them and their effects upon human behavior and expectation. As white women ignore their built-in privilege of whiteness and define women in terms of their own experience alone, then women of color become other. Lord took these beliefs and convictions to a more personal note through her novel, Zami, A New Spelling of My Name, where she focuses on how many different identities shaped her life, along with the experience she had because of them. The name Zami comes from a Caribbean island named Caracao, where her mother immigrated from. She writes that the word means women who work together as friends and lovers, and the name proved fitting as she felt she owed the power and strength to the women in her life. Much of the book is devoted to describing other women and their experiences, showing that personal identity is found within the connections between different parts of one's life. Throughout all of her work, both activism and writing, she leaves readers with a message that identity is not so simply defined. She uses lenses focused on race, gender, sexuality, socioeconomic status, and other identifying human experiences to embrace the intersectionality of one's identity. She was not afraid to assert her differences, the things that made her an outsider, and she used those differences to combat the toxic society around her. She used her identities within her work to teach others how crucial being different is, how it plays an important role in sparking change. Audrey Lord died of breast cancer at the age of 68 in 1992 in St. Croix, where she had been living with her partner, Dr. Gloria I. Joseph, a black feminist. In an African naming ceremony before her death, she took the name Gamba Adiza, which means warrior, she who makes her meaning known. While there are many organizations, awards, and tributes to Audre Lorde, there is one organization that I want to highlight. The Audre Lorde Project was founded in 1984 and is a Brooklyn-based organization committed to fighting injustices affecting lesbian, gay, bisexual, two-spirit, trans, and gender nonconforming people of color. The organization is committed to struggling across differences in order to create change. If you are able to, I urge you to donate in honor of all the LGBTQ plus people of color who have been hurt, systematically oppressed, and will continue to be until our country changes. To learn more about Audre Lorde, I recommend going directly to the source and reading one of her many books. I especially recommend Sister Outsider and Zami, a new spelling of my name, but I have left a full list of her books in the bio below along with the ISBN numbers and any other information that might help you find them. In addition, there are a number of documentaries available that document her life and work. There are a few that I would like to highlight. First, Literary for Survival, The Life and Work of Audre Lorde, The Edge of Each Other's Battles, The Vision of Audre Lorde, and if you're especially interested in Lorde's time in Berlin, Audre Lorde, The Berlin Years, 1984-1992, the links to these are found in the descriptions below. This has been Everyone's Gay, a look into queer history. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a like below, hit subscribe, and share it with your friends. And make sure to find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash everyone's gay queer history. I'm Alexis Harrington, and we'll see you next time. Bye.